and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and welcome to the next video in my book telf book telf sure my bookshelf tour I'm slowly working my way through my bookshelves showing you the books that I have on them and doing them by colour block um this was inspired by the wonderful Lena Norms and um I've done three of these videos so far I've done orange pink and green um I'll link those videos down below if you'd like to go and check out my orange pink and green books and today we're on to purple because i'm wearing my lilac shirt that i bought second hand from depop and it does me ever so well and i've also got lilac eyeshadow on and i've also got freshly painted perhaps a too a little bit too freshly painted nails in lilac um, and i'm going to be showing you the not just the lilac the purple books that are on my bookshelf now what i will say is that a lot of these like as you can see from these books yellow red green identifiably so a lot of these books are purple and something else on the spine but they've made it down to the purple end of town so firstly look i can show you a starter one of um maggie o'farrell's the vanishing act of esme lennox or oh, what i should also say is that the majority of these books i think i might have said this in these videos before but the majority of these books on my color shelves are books that i haven't read before they're books that are waiting to be read um any books that i read and love go to book heaven which is the uh the shelf above this you can't see it um that's where i keep my five star and um books that i think are going to be on my favorite um sometimes a book will make its way back down to here particularly if i love the spine or something maybe although there's i, I wonder if there are oh yeah yeah there's one there that I'd, yeah or like books that i think i might return to um but otherwise in terms of books i tend to give them to if i've read a book and i think oh someone's going to really love that i'll say give that to them and say well don't need a bat just pass it on to whoever you want but I also um donate books to charity we've recently got a community library um near where I live so I take some books there as well so yeah books on these shelves are largely unread as is the case with the vanishing act of Esme Lennox by Maggie O'Farrell I've read many books by Maggie O'Farrell always enjoyed them um and this is another of hers but one that I haven't read um now they bought out a lot of these uh, Maggie O'Farrell's paper but uh <laughs> fiction books in these new paperbacks i've got others maybe they're at the top i don't know i've got two more in this in this this sort of similar front cover one that i've read one that i haven't um and yeah i bought this i either bought this so i bought two when i was with simon in waterstones in canterbury last summer um that brief period of time where um lockdown restrictions sort of eased and he also had a double of one at home and he said that he would send that one to me i think it might have been this one but because they all are from the same collection i can't rightly remember but this is set in the 1930s in edinburgh and it's about the lennox family who are having problems with their youngest daughter esme um and yeah it looks as though there's um and then there's a letter that's written from an from somebody called iris um and all, all sorts of things are going on i really enjoy um maggie o'farrell's books and the sort of way she weaves a story she just weaves it so yeah looking forward to reading that this is also a good way for me to sort of put, pick some books from my tbr as well because i forget sometimes when these books are on my shelves I, I forget how much i wanted to read them when i first got them so when i get them out it's exciting uh this is one that i've had for bloody ages this is galaxy of her own amazing stories of women in space by libby jackson um this is a lovely hardback book it's one of these sort of books um that there are many of now where you have a sort of photo or a picture of somebody and then writing um, talking about them and this is all to do with women in space um, normally if they get a different artist per page and uh, yeah uh, this is for 50 uh, 50 stories of 50 women who have something to do with being like getting into space being in space working for NASA etc etc um, and yeah I got this from the penguin Christmas party my god that was probably about six years ago so i've had it that long on my shelf but yeah i will get round to it one day i will uh, next up is a recently a recently acquired book and this is one that i'm going to put on my tbr for next month that's the lamplighters by emma stonex um this is a sort of recent historical fiction which is becoming like quickly one of my favorite genres like um history or, or like yeah fiction from like the last hundred years um as she says and then i've looked yeah 1972 this is set in cornwall and um it's about uh some lighthouse keepers uh three lighthouse keepers who all go uh missing quite suddenly well i mean how else do you go missing <laughs> they all go missing and um it's the three wives of these lighthouse keepers um that have gone missing them looking into why they might have gone missing now i, I hauled this recently and was excited about it but i was 
more excited that a lot of people had written in the comments that this is quite creepy um so yeah so i'm going to read that in june so that's going over here to get popped in my june Majuna pile. The next is another book that I've got recently, um, and it was an absolute bargain. This is Untamed by Glenn and Doyle. Stop pleasing, start living. Um, and I got this in the cancer research charity shop near where I live. Three books for a pound. And I'd had the, the eye on this for a while, and yeah, I mean, it's normally 14 99 so I've got it for 30, 33 point three reoccurring pence. Um, and yeah, I, I this, this first come to my, um, like, attention because i think adele had 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 read it and said it was brilliant um, it's also got a quote from brene brown on the front and elizabeth gilbert on the back and yeah it's all about um it's like a, a self-help book i guess so it says here let's have a look glennon doyle denied her discontent then one day at a conference she glanced up at a woman and three words flooded her mind there she is. At first, Glennon assumed these women, ca these words came from on high, but soon she realised they'd come from within. This was the voice she'd buried beneath decades of numbing addictions and social conditioning. Glennon decided to let go of her, the, the world's expectations of her and reclaim her true untamed self. So yeah, we'll get round to reading that at some point as well. This is, so this is another one. Sometimes when I get a book and I think, oh, what colour is that uh, spine? I asked David. So a lot of these spine allocations are done for David and I remember well David saying that this was purple and I guess it does have quite a lot of purple blossom it's a very beautiful beautiful front cover this is Nightingale by Marina Kemp um, and I was kindly oh it's got a quote from Joe Baker who wrote Longbourn which I very much enjoyed um, and I got sent this as it was on the long list for a prize and I can't remember what prize it was but I have seen this is recently out in paperback I saw um I saw a picture of it this, let's learn together what it was about. Marguerite de Meurs is 24 when she leaves Paris for the sleepy southern village of Saint-Sulpice to take up a job as a live-in nurse. Her charge is Jérôme Lanvier, once one of the w most powerful and manipulative men in the village, now dying alone in his secluded house. It's not long before the villagers have formed opinions of Marguerite. Bridget Brochon finds her arrogant and mysterious. Suki Lacourse sees Marguerite as an ally in a sea of small-minded provincialism. Hen H Henri Brochon, her husband of Brigitte, wants to protect her from the villagers' intrusive gossip and speculation, but Henri has a secret of his own that would intrigue and disturb the neighbours just as much as the truth about Marguerite would, if only they knew. Do you know what? That sounds bloody brilliant, and I'm hoping, I mean, we had plans last year to go. My parents have got a place in France where um, we, I haven't been for many, many years, and we planned to go last November, um, and that's quite, it's just like a, a village in the middle of nowhere in smack bam in the middle of France. Um, so yeah, uh, when, when we eventually go this year, if we get to go this year, who knows, um, I will be reading this. So yeah, that's, that's good. I like planning a, a location to read a book. Um, oh, this, weirdly, this was also the, so this was one of the sets of the books that I planned on reading when I went to France last year and it didn't happen. So this is um, The Missing of Claire de Lune uh, by Christelle Dubois. So this is the second book in the Mirror Vision visitor quartet um, I've got the other two books there there's a green one and a blue one and yeah as I said this is the second one for some reason I've got the proof of the second one and I've got finished copies of the first and third and then I think the last one comes out this year so I wonder what will happen with that but yeah this was out in July 2019 so I think the first one yeah so that'll be the last one will be coming out um this year and it is um YA sort of epic um fantasy and yeah I mean I, I must get round to I've got like I said this is the second one so this I, I don't I think the third book the colour of it they've got beautiful front covers the third one is yellow so the fact that this is purple and on my shelf is uh it, it's just snuck in there but it's a lovely it's a lovely lilac it goes lovely doesn't it so yeah second book about Ophelia who is able to move through mirrors I believe um and I think in the first book I mean I don't really want to read the back of this because I haven't read the first book yet um but I think in the first book she's she's set up um as an arranged marriage with someone who she barely knows or something like that but yeah the, the main thing is that she can travel through mirrors um and the first one's called the mirror visit and this is called The Missing of Claire de Lune. I think Claire de Lune is the place where she moves to for the arranged marriage. But like I said, I don't want to look too deeply at the back of this. But yeah, that's another book that I'm going to read when I go to France this year. Hopefully, if I do go to France this year. Hopefully. Oh yeah, so this is one of the books that I've read and just sort of hung on to because I will be going, coming back to it. This is A History of Women in 100 Objects. Um, and this is by Maggie Andrews and Janice Lomas. And I found this really, really interesting. <laughs> is what it says on the tin it is a history of women in 100 objects so throughout um history different 
things appear with a beautiful picture of it. It's, it's like a, a museum in a book, really. A very good, a very well curated um, museum display. So number forty-four is Lady Curzon's peacock dress, and it says uh, so. It will talk about the the dress itself, but then it goes into sort of like more um, detail on clothes and imperial identity. Um, and I remember particularly, mainly because the, this is the front, the front cover, you might not be able to see, but behind these words is a, pi is a picture of the pill. And the, 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 the section on the pill um, talks about the pill and it coming into, um, uh, coming into like general circulation, I guess. Um, but it also talks about um, Iceland and how um, there hasn't been a... Um, and I'm because I haven't read this for about four years, but I'm sure the bit about the pill talked about how in Iceland, um, so the, the, the further the, the further stuff it talks about the pill is like contraception and um, childbirth, and they were saying that in Iceland there hasn't been a child born, born with Down syndrome in so many years because they identify those children as having Down syndrome so early, and it is against the law to have a child with Down syndrome. Um, so yeah, if I, but th there's a lot of like. Although the stuff that it's got a silicon breast implant, so yeah, like I said, it's a really well curated book. And actually, even just holding this now is making me want to read it again because I just found it so interesting. Do I keep it out? Do I keep it out? Yeah, I think I will. Um, so yeah, that just goes to show that one book that I have read, I've put on there, but very well pulled together. I would highly recommend. Um, let's have a look. All oh, right, so here's another book that isn't a purple spine but has ended up on the purple shelves. I think maybe because the majority of it is purple. Um, this is uh, A Life of Adventure and Delight by Akhil Sharma. Um, and this was sent to me like a long, long time ago when I was doing booktube. And I think maybe I've hung on to it purely because of that spine. So let's see if it's worth the hanging on to. So it says here, late one June afternoon, seven months after my wedding, I woke from a short, deep sleep in love with my husband. Whether the... the but whether describing the tensions of an arranged marriage, the trauma of having an alcoholic mother, or the petty corruption of an Indian neighbourhood, or it's short stories, Akhil Sharma's uh, stories always expose the cultural collisions, the paradoxes, ironies, and harmonies that characterise modern life. What does it mean to be foreign, and can you find a home in exile? Oh yeah, great. We will definitely hang on to that. Definitely. Uh, then I've got Poor Things um, by Alice Dare Gray. Again, not much of a purple uh, uh, spine, but I think I've gone based on this tiny little bit here. Um, this, I, I picked this up. I think I bought it second hand. I think I bought it second hand. But yeah, I, I basically I picked it up because Jen talks about it so much. Um, and this is, um, oh God. I mean, I'll read it out because I can't quite remember, but I remember her loving it so much. So, what strange secret made rich, beautiful, tempestuous Bella Baxter irresistible to the poor Scottish medical student Archie McCandless? Was it her mysterious origin on the home of his monstrous friend Godwin Baxter, the genius whose voice could perforate eardrums? This story of true love and scientific daring whirls the reader from the private operating theatres of late Victorian Glasgow through aristocratic casinos, low-life Alexandria and a Parisian bordello, reaching an interrupted climax in a Scottish church church hmm. so there we go that's why i got that now i love these front covers so these are um so this is a little princess by francis hodgson burnett and these are um as well as this one i own the um anne of green gables front cover these were published by penguin under uh, the sisterhood so they're all this beautiful artwork which is done by julia ozdemir i follow her on instagram following seeing these gorgeous front covers um and all of them so there's a little princess anne of green gables pride and prejudice little women railway children and heidi and they've all got this sort of front cover of like hair being spent and to be honest i bought this one because i loved the front cover of the anne of green gables one so much and i love anne of green gables it's i read it last year in one of my fave books i already had countless copies of pride and prejudice i already had a hardback copy of little women the railway children i remember reading when i was younger and thinking it was a complete bore fest but maybe i need to revisit that and heidi just didn't sing to me so i ended up picking up the little princess because i remember somewhere in the back of my mind watching the film of it when I was younger. Having bought this, I believe that there's a few problems with this book and colonialism. So yeah, whether or not I will get round to reading that, I don't know, um, but I definitely need to look more into it. But fuck me, these front covers are absolutely bloody beautiful. I wish they'd do more like that. Uh, next few books, um, this was another 
bargain buy from um, the Cancer Research Bookshop as well. This is Whatever Happened to Interracial Love, stories by Kathleen Collins, and these are short stories. This is published by Granta. I remember seeing this in the Cancer Research Bookshop and being so bloody excited. Um, yeah, so um, these are short stories that were written in the late 1960s and 1970s, um, and they were actually unpublished in Catholic, Catherine's, uh, Kathleen, sorry, lifetime. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it says here, these stories transport the reader into a world of civil rights conferences and sit-ins, church rallies and art galleries, where poets, freedom fighters and lonely young women wait out hot summers in dingy New York apartments, all wondering whatever happened to interracial love. So yeah, there we go. Um, I've got Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. This is published by um, Europa and translated from French. I've started this. I don't know why I didn't carry on. Actually, oh no, I thought I had a bookmark in it that went further that I thought I'd got really far through it but I, I, I remember starting it but I don't know why I didn't carry on with it um so yeah it's set in Iran and it's talking about Kimya um the the, the character Kimya Sadat who fled Iran with her mother and sisters at the age of 10 to join her father in France now in her 20s sitting in a fertility clinic in Paris as she awaits life-changing news Kimya is inundated by memories of her ancestors reminiscences and family myths that reach her un in unstoppable waves and I remember it opens it literally opens in the um, infertility clinic uh, sorry, not the infertility clinic, the fertility clinic. Um, and yeah, so I need to get back around to that. Next up is The Prom by Sound Sandra Mitchell, Sandra Mitchell, um, which was sent to me by the publisher. Um, this was sent to me last year ahead of um, the, 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 the book being made into a Netflix film. Dave and I actually watched the Netflix film. I think we watched it in between Christmas and New Year last year. Um, it's got James Corden in it. I mean, what the fuck hasn't got James Corden in it? It was fine it's got good representation in terms of like it's about a, and I'm, I'm recording this from the film because i haven't read the book about a um, young girl emma who wants to take her girlfriend to the prom um and there she's told that no she can't take her girlfriend to the prom and she is banned um by the prom and her sort of getting um some support from um I mean, in the film, they're presented as sort of like failing West End stars um, or Broadway stars, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I thought the film was fine. I remember like James Corden's doing a very sort of like campy, lispy, like presentation of a gay man. And I thought, do we need this lisp? This is just James Corden with a lisp. Like, could he not just have been James Corden? Did he need to have a lisp to, to be like to the gay man hmm, who knows um but yeah so i've sort of hung on to it because i didn't think the film i, I thought the, the the story i enjoyed the story of the film more than i enjoyed the film so yeah i wondered if i would still enjoy the book so we shall hang on to that um then i've got practical magic by alice hoffman um and read this for patreon book club a few years ago i wonder why i've hung on to this like i thought it was fine I might get rid of that actually. Yeah, I think I will. Like, it was fine. I mean, everyone knows Practical Magic. I've actually watched the film of it since then as well. Um, I think maybe I enjoyed it more at the time because I'm, I'm sort of struggling to find things that I loved in it. I actually bought the sequel, which is an orange book up there somewhere called Something Magic? Rules of Magic. Will I read this again? Nah, I don't think I will. We can get rid of that. So yeah, there we go. That can be popped over there. That's in the Grit Riddle pile. So it's helping myself out as well. Um, wing Jones by Catherine Webber. Um, this is a YA book um, about uh, Wing Jones, um, whose uh, m grandmother is from China and her other grandmother is from Ghana. Um, she's 15 and she feels caught between worlds. And I believe there's a lot in here about uh, her being a runner. Um, the spine of this is beautiful. It's, look, and it all goes all the way around, pink and purple. Um, so yeah, and I believe Simon get, got me this. Is it signed? Normally he gets me signed, but it, for Lauren from Catherine so yeah I must read that at some point uh, then I've got Weathering by Lucy Wood <clears throat> I feel like I've sort of hung on to this because I think this was one of the first books I ever got sent as a booktuber so I was so so excited to receive it and I've never read it and I should do really because yeah this was one of the like I said this was one of the first ever books that I got sent for read and review and I've never read and reviewed it so yeah it's always stayed I've, I've bought it with me wherever um, but yeah, the front cover's really beautiful as well. It's got these two leaves on here. Let's see if we can recall what it's about. Pearl doesn't know how she's ended up in the river, the same messy cacophonous river in the same rain-soaked valley she's been stuck in for years, or why for that matter she's been stupid enough to fall down these rickety stairs. 
Ada, Pearl's daughter, doesn't know how she ended up back in the house she left 13 years ago. With her daughter Pepper, she starts to sort through Pearl's things, clearing the house so she can leave and not look back. As the first frost of autumn herald the coming of long winter, and Pepper and Ada find themselves irresistibly entangled with the life of the valley, each will discover the ways that places can take roots inside us and bind us together. So yeah, that does sound... That does sound interesting, doesn't it? It sounds like it could have some like aspects of nature writing in there as well. Right, we're on to the last few, gang. We're on to the last few. Uh, Wicked Like Wildfire by Lana Popovic. I think Mercedes was getting rid of this and I was like, oh yeah, maybe I'll give this a go. I haven't read it. Shall I hang on to it? It's a witchy book. Um, and it's published by Catherine Teagan Books, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. I think it's, yeah, I think it's... Um, the US book. All the women in Iris and Melina's family have the unique magical ability or gleam to manipulate beauty. Iris sees flowers as fractals and turns her kaleidoscopic visions into glasswork, while Melina interprets mu moods as music. But their mother has forbidden Iris and Melina to share their magic with anyone and above all to fall in love. God, this sounds very similar to uh, Practical Magic. But when their mother is attacked and left hovering between life and death, the sisters unearth an ancient curse that binds their fates and hearts to a force larger than life. To save each other, they must untangle a thousand years of lives and secrets maybe I will hang on to this and I'll read this like around October like witchy reads around October yeah I think I will do that uh, I've got Loveless by Alice Oseman Alice Oseman is the author and illustrator of the Heartstopper series um, which I really like and um, I've read quite a few of uh, Alice's books I've read This Winter I've read Nick and Charlie and this is about Georgia who is asexual and aromantic um, which is a uh, I, I think these are YA books yeah I'm sure they are yeah it says here teen um so yeah, that's a sort of like perspective I haven't seen or heard of much in teen books. So yeah, we'll get around to that as well. I've got Favour and Favour, A Year in Poetry, 2019. This can probably go as well. Um, I think this got sent to me one Christmas by Favour and Favour. So yes, lovely, but I uh, will pop that there for release. Things I Don't Want to Know by Deborah Levy. This is a response to George Orwell's 1946 essay, Why I Write. Simon gave me this as well as a lot of... Simon and Mercedes cast offs in here. Um, I think I got this, if I'm remembering rightly, because I, I've got like I've got such a terrible memory, but then I remember things so clearly. When I went to Lake District two years ago, um, with on holiday with my cousin and my auntie and my cousin's husband and my what's my cousin's I don't know, my, what's your cousin's baby called to you? I don't know. Second cousin, cousin what's removed and. Um, some friends uh, we went on a holiday to the Lake District and on the way there we stayed a night over me and David did at Simon's house and um, as, as Simon always does he gave me a little pile of books and this was included in it so yeah this is a unique response to George Orwell from one of our vi most vital contemporary writers taking Orwell's famous list of motives for writing as the jumping off point for a sequence of thrilling reflections on the writing life this is a perfect companion not only to Orwell's essays but also to Levy's own essential oeuvre so yes very good uh, and then the last one i've got is things a bright girl can do by sally nichols um and this is a ya book um sort of as you can see the co cover has got the suffragettes co uh, colors on it and it's written in the suffragettes color and votes for women on the back um and yeah, this is it's set in 1914. The world stands on the edge of change, but women still have no vote. Evelyn is rich and clever, but she isn't allowed to go to university. Life is set out for her, but Evelyn wants freedom and choice, even if it means paying the highest price alongside her fellow suffragettes. Uh, and then there's another character, meanwhile, May campaigns tirelessly for women's votes with other anti-violence suffragists. When she meets Nell, a girl who's grown up in hardship, she sees a kindred spirit. Together and in love, the girl, two girls can start a dream to dream of a world where all kinds of women can find their place. Oh, this sounds great! Well, maybe I'll read this. That's staying out as well. So yeah, so those are um, my purple books from my shelves. Let me know if you've read any of these. Oh, now I've got to do my thumbnail with them. That's going to be hard work, isn't it? And put them all back. Let me know if you've read any of these purple spined books. Um, and if you've got any favourites. And yeah, I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye!